everyone. Welcome to our first ENC 2135 Monday, March 23rd um, low-key video lecture today. Um, I hope that all of you guys are doing very well at home. Um, just a quick general note, um, I know that moving to this online platform can be a little bit confusing, so please remember that communication is going to be the 100% um, key to get to us all getting through this. So if you have any questions or concerns, make sure that you're emailing me about those. Make sure that you're reaching out to me to video chat if you want to talk face to face. Um, I'm fine with either one. And um, so just please make sure that you are communicating your needs and any problems that you might be having to me. That way we can make sure that we all get through the end of this course with very little stress. Um, as I'm sure that you guys are probably a little bit stressed about, um, about having all of your classes suddenly online. Um, so hopefully when you're watching this, it is either 1220 or 125, um, and you are starting this class. Um, we are going to be having this sort of, um, synchronous, even though I won't be lecturing every day, um, because it's just not necessary for our class. Um, we will be meeting, on Canvas during our class time. This just ensures that that our um, we still have structure, that we maintain academic professionalism, that you have all of the time that you need to get your work done. Um, and also there it provides this window from 12 to 3, um, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, where if you have any need to talk to me or communicate with me, I am available for you. So I will be responding to emails instantaneously and I will also be available for video chat um, we will do our best to work with Zoom, um, but like many, I don't have a lot of experience with Zoom as a platform, so we will do our best, and if we need to move to Skype or some other kind of video platform, we can do that. Um, Google Hangouts, something like that. Um, so again, we will just do our best to get through all of this together. Um, so today we're going to have some quick announcements, and then we're going to talk about remediation, and then we're going to move into our Project 3, which is a remediation project, and we'll be introducing Project 3. Um, all of your materials are under this Monday, March 23rd module, so make sure to go look at your Project 3 assignment sheet. Um, in fact, I would recommend having this video in one window and then being able to pause it and go look at the Canvas page so that you can do things back and forth or you can watch the whole video and then go over to Canvas. It's whatever you prefer, but if I were you, I would go ahead and pause me, go look at the examples and then come back um, and continue on. Um, so let's get started. Um, so your project two is due at midnight, so make sure that um, that you are turning in your Project 2 final draft by midnight tonight. If you are having any problems, any online submission stuff, again, make sure you send me an email. We will do our best to sort out all kinks in a reasonable amount of time. Um, I hope that, you know, that has gone really well for everyone. I was really, really impressed with everyone's papers during conferences, so I'm really excited to see what you guys have put together for the Project 2. Um, final draft. And then second reminder, discussion seven is going to be on Friday. Um, we are, um, those, it's going to be our news analysis week. Those links are posted under, it says news analysis links on our Monday, March 23rd module. Um, and if you just read through those, click on them, you will be prepared for our discussion. Um, as I mentioned in my announcement, we are actually not doing the pre-class discussion board because it's redundant to do two discussion boards for one set of readings. So we are going to be doing an in-class discussion board led by questions from our discussion leaders, and there will be explicit directions for that on Friday so that you know exactly what's expected of you, exactly what you need to do in order to get full credit to, for participating in our discussion on Friday. Um, yeah, so um, today um, we're going to be talking about remediation. Um, so this is a term that some of you might be not familiar with, but luckily it is a very easy term because it is in fact exactly what it says it is. So the main word right here, right, is media. And then we remedia. So basically what, what this means is you're moving content from one genre into another. You are changing the media that you are using to communicate the content that you want to 
convey to your audience or perhaps to a different audience. Um, so we encounter remediation all the time. Um, and there are a couple of different reasons that you might remediate material. And there are a lot of reasons, but the three, the three main reasons, the three biggest reasons that people remediate is either to criticize or comment upon. So for example, satire is a good, is a genre where, where you're remediating the original content into a satire in order to comment on it. So think about how the scary movie franchise, how that comments upon on the tropes of horror movies and things like that to make a joke out of it, to make fun of it, right? Um, another example is just simple humor. Um, so I'm sure that you guys have seen a lot of that with all of this coronavirus stuff. I've seen um, coronavirus um, lyrics to the Friends theme. I've seen coronavirus Bohemian Rhapsody. Um, and all of those are remediating those original songs to be about coronavirus in order to invoke humor and comedy. Um, about a serious issue. And then the third reason, and this one will be really big for your project three, the third reason is um, reaching a new audience. Um, so I have placed on our modules three example, three real world examples of remediation, and I'd like for you to go check them out. Um, the first one is going to be a satire remediation um, so we have two articles to look at. The first article is a real news article about social distancing during this coronavirus thing. And then the second one is an Onion article that satirizes social distancing and also comments upon um, upon our reluctance, right, to change our routines and to socially distance and to take this as, you know, a serious issue um, that we need to handle. So go ahead and this would be a great time. Go ahead and pause this video and go over and look at those two articles and note how that first article is a serious news article. And then the author for The Onion takes that content and puts it into, um, it, it's the same kind of the same genre, but it satirizes it, puts it into a satire article in order to comment on, um, on both the epidemic and our response to it, our social response to it that we have been seeing um, in America today. Um, all right, so I'll give you a second to do that. And then hopefully you're back now. So if you are back now, um, hopefully you just saw our satire remediation example. Um, now our second example is a humorous example. Um, it is a remediation of um, of the Mary Poppin, the recent Mary Poppins trailer. It's called Scary Poppins. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory. There's not really like a huge social purpose to it except to just take this content and put it into the horror genre. So it's taking the images and the scenes from the original Mary Poppins trailer, which is, you know, of course, very intended to be very cheerful and delightful and aimed at children and things like that. And they have used horror conventions to remediate it into a horror commercial uh, or a horror trailer for humor. So go ahead and pause this, go watch that. And I hope you're back and I hope you enjoyed it. Um, and our third example for today is, um, is, you, is remediating for a new genre. So I have an Amazon link to a book that aims to teach children about um, mental health. So it's taking this very adult concept that you could easily write a research, research paper on, that you could easily write content for adults um, about mental health issues. And it has repurposed all of this information um, and attempted to put it into a children's book to speak to a young audience about this very adult, very complicated issue. Um, so the Amazon, um, the Amazon link allows you to look through it. So just look through a few pages and notice how it uses the conventions of children's books, simple language, large text, bright pictures, right, in order to communicate communicate emotion and complicated content to children in a way that they can understand it. So this is an example of remediating for a new audience. Um, um, yeah, so pause, go look at that children's book, and I hope that you're back. 
So um, hopefully you have a good understanding of what remediation is. Um, remediation literally is a huge part of life. You know, every time all of those Greek myths that are rewritten again and again, all of that is um, remediation. Adapting books into movies. So if you've read Harry Potter and watched the movies or read Lord of the Rings and watched the movies, all of that is is remediation, um, changing from one genre to another, to, you know, experiment with different effects, to get a different perspective on a story, to reach a different audience, right? All of this is remediation. Um, so now let's get into our project three. So your project three um, is a remediation project, um, and it's very simple. So essentially, oof, you're going to take your projects one, or your project two. So you can choose project one or project two, but you do have to choose one. You can't do both. Um, so project one or project two. And what you're going to do is you're going to remediate or adapt, right? We can kind of, um, for, the, for the time being, we can use these two words interchangeably, remediate or adapt this, the content of these projects into three new genres. Um, so, um, so, um, um, yeah, so basically you're taking your ideas from project one or project two and turning it into three new, three new genres and they're going to be creative genres or, um, I guess they don't have to be creative genres, but none of them is going to be an academic paper is my point. Um, so our project, this would be a great time for you to go ahead and pause this real quick, go over to our module and download that project three assignment sheet. Um, so that's going to have, obviously, that's going to be our full assignment sheet. So I need you to make sure that you go ahead. I don't know where my, oh, sorry, my eraser. Um, go ahead and go over and look at that project three assignment sheet and, um, and make sure you read it. Because one of your, after, at the end of class today, I'm going to require you to do a journal and I want you to respond to um, what we've learned today. And this is also your opportunity to ask any questions um, that we have, that you might have about your project three. Um, so to give you a little bit of more detail right now about project three, I do have some examples posted on Canvas. So you can go ahead and look at your student examples. But essentially what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking our ideas from our project two or two or one and picking three new ways to communicate that information. So, for example, we have our running um, our running example of declawing cats as our persuasive research assignment. So if I were thinking, okay, I've written a research paper about declawing cats, but not very many people are going to read my research paper. Only other veterinarians, only my peers, only people who are, you know, sitting, sitting down and reading academic research papers about veterinary medicine. Um, so instead, I'm going to want to remediate into three different genres. So I might write a song about um, about the horror. I could write a punk song, like a really angry activist protest punk song about um, the cruelty of declawing, declawing cats. Or I could write a poem about how cute my cat's sharp little claws are. Um, or I could write um, an infographic, right? So we could make an infographic on canva.com or something like that, that has those facts that, um, that um, about decline cats in a really quick and easy format for people to see. So um, that punk song could be on an album of other activist songs for animals. And maybe I could envision that infographic going up in a veterinary office for cat owners to be able to see it and get that information really quickly from that infographic format. Um, so basically what you're going to be doing is you're going to be picking three genres that you think would communicate your information well, and then you are going to um, be doing those three genres. So you might write a short story, you might consider writing um, a song, you could do a painting or an infographic um, or a poster or anything like that. Um, and then you're going to be writing an artist statement that just explains what you did and why. Um, so for example, if I were to write my 
um, my punk song, right, about declawing cats, I would explain that I had picked the punk genre because um, it expresses um, really intense um, emotion. Um, it has a history of being kind of like a protest genre. So I'd be like drawing on the history of that genre to communicate my feelings. Um, you know, I might talk about why I chose to write specific lyrics, what they mean to me. Um, basically going through all of those small decisions and explaining to your audience why you did what you did. Why is this genre good? What audience am I trying to reach? What is my purpose in making this composition? And, um, and how did I make all of these choices? So if you make an infographic and you decide to make it blue and you decide to make the text here really big and here really small, tell us why you did those things. Tell us why you made those design choices. Um, so I can't obviously take questions over this video, but I will obviously be taking questions through your journals and through um, FaceTime and things like that, or, or rather video chatting, things like that. So make sure you ask me questions if you're confused, but go ahead and read through that assignment sheet pretty thoroughly um, and just see what you think. Um, so now just to get into the requirements of this assignment. So your project three has a couple of requirements. Um, so the first requirement is you'll see at the top of the assignment sheet that it's 1,500 words. Now, don't be alarmed. Um, so this 1,500 words is actually broken up. Um, so 500 of these words, of these words must be in your project. So in project. So what that means is that probably one of your genres needs to be majority written, like text-based. So for example, you could write a blog post, or you could write a short story, or you could write a, a, a brief memoir, or a scene from a movie, or um, something like that. And that's going to count towards that 500 words. If you do an infographic, right, that has a um, hundred words on it. That counts towards your 500 words. If you do a poster that has 20 words on it, that also counts towards this 500 words. So it's just 500 words across your three genres. So, so total, not in each project, total across your three genres, 500 words. And then the 1000 words is in your artist statement. So remember, your artist statement is where you're explaining what you did and why, basically. And we will be looking at some examples of artist statements and learning more about those. Um, so don't worry about these just yet. Start, what I want you to do right now is I just want you to start focusing on your actual three genres. So on Wednesday, we are going to be picking three genres and doing a group discussion board where you can um, post your three genres that you're thinking about, why you think they might be good, and then responding to each other's and commenting. So kind of doing a little quick virtual peer review there. Um, and um, then our first draft is going to be due on Friday, April 3rd. So for your first draft, you don't need to have an artist statement at all yet. All you need to have on Friday, April 3rd, all you need to have on Friday, April 3rd is two out of three genres started, like probably half done, right? So for example, if you're doing, um, if you're doing a video, if you're like, um, if you're remediating a trailer and, uh, and writing a song and, um, painting a painting, then maybe you could have your painting mo like mostly done and like your song kind of in rough draft form and that would be a solid first draft. So I just want to see that you have solidly started two out of your three genres and that's going to be due a week from Friday. Um, yeah, 
Um, so uh, make sure you check out those student examples that I have posted on Canvas. If you want to, I can go ahead and post a few more examples. Um, just thinking off the top of my head, I have had students, um, I had one student write a paper on Love, Simon. Actually, I think we read that paper as an example for Project One. She remediated her Love, Simon project and she actually recut the trailer to reflect more of what value she took from that movie. So you could remake that trailer. Um, you could make, I've had people for their project one, make a movie poster for the movie they talked about. Um, I have had um, people write stories. I've had people write, I had one person write a clarinet quartet. Um, which was great, which was very fun. Um, keep in mind that um, you're welcome to experiment with any genre that you want to. Make sure to look at our genre ABCs for more ideas if you're um, not knowing what genres you might want to do. Um, but this is a great time to work on, especially if you want to work on writing creatively. This is a really good time to spend some time on that. Um, I will be grading this based on you know, the fact that you've completed them, that you have put that effort in, and I will be grading them based on your artist statements. So the thought that you put into it. So if you're working on writing a short story and it's really terrible, that's okay. I'm not going to be grading on like, um, you know, you being like the best short story writer or the best painter or the best singer or whatever in the world. I really just want to see you being careful and making sure that you're making conscious rhetorical choices that you explain in your artist statement. And that's going to be the basis for grading for this project. Um, so please let me know if you have any questions and um, I will get some more examples to post, but make sure you look at the ones that we already have up there and um, we will reconvene on Wednesday. All right. Excellent.